Hey, happy Mother's Day. Mothers, we want you to know that we love you and we, we honor you today. Today we have this rocking chair here as a symbol of, of honor. Moms, we hope today is a day that you can just sit down and relax and take a break. Maybe, moms, you can relate to this news reporter, Kooky Roberts, who said about being a mother, I always wanted children, but not until they were actually part of my life did I realize how I could love that freely or get that angry. <laughs> Some of you may be here today to honor your mothers. And today what we want to do is we want to unpack that one word today of honor. So on the count of three, I'd like you to just say the word honor. You ready? Here we go. All participation today. One, two, three. Honor. honor. On the count of three, let's say it again. You ready? One, two, three. Honor. honor. What does it mean to truly honor? You know, in our culture and in our society in the West as Americans, we don't show very much honor. In our Western culture, it's very individualized. It's very much about us, and, and they, they tell us that we live in this, this guilt-based culture. Sociologists will also tell you that we have a lot to learn, maybe from the Eastern cultures that are more of a shame-based culture, where in their culture, there's a lot of honor. There's a lot of respect. So like if you go to Korea, you know, one of the ways that you show honor when you see someone is you, you, you a little slight bow, right? Not, not a full bow, okay, but just a, a little slight bow. Or one of the things you may do is whenever you're going to shake someone's hand, you may grab their, their elbow or their forearm as a sign of showing honor, of showing respect. You know, there's some other things you can do by bringing a little gift, not an expensive gift, just a simple gift in other cultures that shows honor. Uh, I love how they present the gifts, too. You ever watch them, like, present gifts? You present it with two hands to show honor. Or you receive the gift with two hands back to be able to show honor. Now, there are some, also some things you can do to show dishonor, things that are disrespectful. And I've had the privilege of being able to travel, go on a lot of mission trips. And, and uh, when I went to some Asian cultures, I asked them to kind of school me on things so I wouldn't look foolish and I wouldn't look dumb and said, what are some things that are dishonoring? Uh, one of the things is to cross your legs as a guy. To be able to show the soles of your feet uh, is actually a dishonoring thing to do or to put your feet up on, on the desk or to do different things along that line to, to show dishonor, to cross your legs. See, in American culture, we're very individualized, and we don't think as much about honor because we are pumping, do your best, be the best, and it can become all about us. And many cultures around the world, they look at Americans and they consider us disrespectful and dishonoring because of our, our attitude of, of being the best. Today I want to talk about honor, and, and there's a passage of scripture that talks about honor. It talks about Jesus and, and a time when he was not honored, a time when he was dishonored. And in Jesus' culture, honoring people and honoring your family was a very deep thing. So here's the story. Jesus was going back to his hometown, not his birthplace, but the place he grew up. And he comes back to this hometown after this teaching tour. He just got back, you know, from this long tour where he had fed the 5,000. He was performing these miracles where he, he, he healed people. He opened up blind eyes. Even on one occasion, he even healed Peter's mother-in-law, which many scholars believe is why Peter later denied Christ. <laughs> just, just joking, just joking, joking. Mark chapter 6 and verse 1 says this. It says, Jesus, he left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. And they asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? In other words, they were wowed by him. He was blowing their minds, and his teaching was powerful. And, and they were asking, how can he do such amazing things? And then someone spoke up in verse 3. It says, then they scoffed. And they said, he's just a carpenter. Jesus, he's just an ordinary guy. He's the son of Mary. And he's the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. And even his sisters are living right here among us. 
And they were deeply offended by Jesus, and they refused to believe in him. They're like, hey, he's no big deal. He's just ordinary. I mean, wasn't Jesus that kid in class that was always so annoying because the teacher always liked him? I mean, isn't he the one that always got 100% on every exam? I mean, isn't that Jesus? He, that's the guy who made your kitchen table, right? He's the carpenter. He's just a regular guy. Verse 4 says, Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. The Greek word for honor is the word atomos. Atomos. Uh, or this is the word that means without honor. And it, it simply means to dishonor, or listen to this. This is an interesting definition. To treat someone as common or ordinary. That's what they were doing with Jesus. They weren't showing honor to him, and they weren't showing honor because they just said, he's just ordinary. He's just a common man. This was called atomos. I think we have to be careful of that today as well. Especially when it comes to our mothers on Mother's Day. Of just treating them as common, as ordinary. Taking them for granted. You know, husbands, we do this early on in our, whenever we're dating as well. We're early on, we're, we're like in love. And you're showing honor. You open the door. You bring presents and flowers. You use your pet names. You know, yesterday I posted a little Facebook post, and I just said, tell me some of your favorite pet names for one another. And I, I got all kinds of comments down. I, I thought I'd share a few of my, my favorite ones. If you're looking for pet names for your significant other, here, here's a good list for you to be able to choose from. Sexy Beast. I like that. Shannon, let's use that one. You can start that one today. I'm... Lover. Many of you use babe. Some of you use boo. Munchkin. That's one of my favorite ones there, too. Munchkin. See, what happens is you show all this honor at the beginning of the relationship. Then after you get married, you begin to take one another for granted. And instead of showing honor, you, you treat one another as common. Atomos. Just showing them common. Suddenly what was great because common... And common is actually to show dishonor. Now, Greek, the Greek word for honor is the word time, time. And here's what it means. It means to show value. So if you want to show value, you want to show time, it means respect, high esteem, to treat someone or something as precious, to ascribe worth, time. That's what it means to show honor. Uh, I love basketball. Some of you know that. And in my office, uh, I have this trash can that had this, it had this basketball uh, backboard on it. And then it has a rim and a little net and you just shoot trash in it. And, and I love that little basketball thing because that's where I teach my son to play basketball. And so, you know, scripture says train them up in the way they should go, right? So I got to train them up, all right, to be a basketball player in the way he should go. So, so when he's in my office, we always take a little trash and we make little basketballs. And, and, and we shoot it in there. And, and I love basketball in my office. I also, uh, I have this trophy that I have a basketball from college. I play basketball in college. And actually, I was the leading scorer of our college basketball team. Now, before you get too impressed, you've heard of the NCAA. I played in the NCCAA, National Christian Collegiate Athletic Association. I know, big-time basketball, big-time basketball. So I was the all-time leading scorer. I actually broke the record on my final game my senior year, and my team presented the game ball to me, and they all signed it. My coach signed it. They wrote you know, little words on it, and, and they honored me. They showed me respect by giving me that ball. So, so I display it there in my office. So it's up on the trophy that I have. There's a basketball, and, and you know we, we admire it and everything. And you know, and, and then, my, all of a sudden, I come in one day, and it's not there. I'm like, where did my basketball go? And I'm looking all over. Can't find my basketball anywhere. Looking through the cabinets. And then I talk to Shannon, and Shannon says, I think I know what happened. 
Braden, when he was three years old, my son, he came into my office and instead of shooting trash into that little trash basketball goal, he decided to start shooting the real thing. So he took my autographed basketball and he shot it into the trash can. Then he decided he doesn't need to rebound. He just left it right there in the trash can. So it's gone, all right? It went to the, the dump somewhere else along the way. So here's the point. I have a lot of basketballs, all right? Some I have in the trunk, trunk of my car. I've got some outside, like in the mud. They're just like ordinary. But this was one that I would show value to, that, that, that meant a lot to me. Honor. See, when it comes to other people, you don't want to treat other people just like everything else is ordinary. You want to show high esteem, high value. Dishonoring devalues. It tears down. But honor, it lifts people up. It shows esteem. Honor, it's believing the best about people. Dishonor is believing the worst about others. Honor, it lifts. Dishonor, it tears down. Today's Mother's Day, and some of you are, are here today. And maybe you've been treating your mom as just ordinary, as just common, of just taking her for granted. And I would encourage you today to show high value. Maybe today you've been taking your wife for granted. You've just been treating her as ordinary. And today is a day that I challenge you to show her high value, high worth and esteem. Some are here today and you may need to apologize to your mother because you've treated her as just common. Maybe today is a day where you need to say, Mom, I highly value you. Now, some of you are here today and you say, well, I can't treat this person with honor because they're not honorable. And to you, I would say this. You might write this down today. Respect is earned. Honor is given. Respect is something that you earn. But honor, it should be freely and it should be, it should be given. You can honor someone, which is different than respect. You can honor someone because of their position. You can treat someone with honor even before they live honorably. And the honor that you show them lifts them up to live honorably. Here's a, here's a principle of life. Before you can learn to be over someone, you've got to learn to be under. You have to learn to be able to show honor. And you're under by showing authority to God who was put over you. We should honor one another. Honor has a way of changing the person that you're trying to honor, and it has also a way of changing you. Now watch what the spirit of dishonor does to Jesus. Verse 5, Mark chapter 6 and verse 5, it says, And because of their unbelief, Jesus couldn't do any mighty miracles among them, except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Now this is interesting. It says he couldn't do any miracles among them because of their dishonoring. Whenever there's dishonor, whenever there's a lack of faith, don't expect supernatural things to happen in your life. Supernatural things happen with faith. Supernatural things, they happen whenever you begin to show honor. And where there's no honor, there will be no miracles. Miracles and honor and faith are all tethered together. One of the most famous passages about honoring would be found in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It's one of the Ten Commandments, and, and this commandment actually shows us the importance of honoring, but it also tells us some of the benefits of honoring as well. So I want to ask you, church, today just to read it out loud. You ready? Let's read it out loud together. It says this, honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land your God is given you. Tragically today, we can be dishonoring. And I believe that it breaks the heart of God, children, whenever you mouth off to your parents, or you dishonor them, or you say things like, I hate you, or I'm not listening to you. Listen, scripture says we're to honor our parents. You may say, but Brian, my mom and dad didn't live honorable lives. See, my dad, he ran off with another woman, or my mom was drunk, or whatever it is you want to say, remember, respect is earned. 
honor is given. We honor our mothers and our fathers because it's the right thing to do. It's what God instructs us to do. And we do it out of a surrendered, submissive, and grateful heart. We show honor. Here's the assignment I want to give you this week. It's found in Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. It says, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in what, church? And honoring each other. Why is it that we are a culture without honor? You know why I believe we don't have much honor in our culture? The reason our culture is dishonoring is because people aren't honoring God. It all starts with honoring God. All true honor is born out of a heart of surrender. When you surrender, you show honor. And whenever you show a heart of surrender to King Jesus, you are showing honor. And then that honor begins to flow out of you and show honor to others. Psalm twenty-two, twenty-three says this, Praise the Lord. All you who fear him, honor him. Honor him. All you descendants of Jacob, show him reverence. All you descendants of Israel, we are to show honor and reverence to our king. And the problem is, we have treated God as common. We become too familiar with him. He's too ordinary. You've heard guys say, you've heard people say before, oh, he's the big guy upstairs. Beware of that. Because guess what? He is a king. He is someone that we should honor. People say, oh, he's the big man. Or he's my homeboy. Jesus is my homeboy. Jesus is not your homeboy. We should show him honor and respect. Some of you remember the, the line of the movie that said, I don't, I don't want to pray to the Father. I, I, I want to pray to the six-pound, eight-ounce baby Jesus. The one that you can just kind of control. Jesus is not a little baby in a manger. Let me tell you about who my God is. Today, I want to show him honor and respect because he is King Jesus. He went to the cross for our sins. He was bruised and beaten and scourged and punished for our salvation. He came on a rescue mission for each and every one of us. He is one that deserves honor and respect because he is the one that gave us a fresh start. He is the one that has forgiven us of our past. He's the one that has put the Holy Spirit inside of us that can guide us and lead us and direct us. He is the one that has given us a forever home, forever secured in heaven, a place of no pain, no tears, and no suffering. And he is the one that we are to honor. Today, I want to show honor today. And today, I want to give you an opportunity to show honor as well. And I believe that it should start with King Jesus, that we should honor our Father today. We should take a moment just honoring him for who he is and revering what he's done for us. And today, I think we should also show honor to those that are around us as well. You know, today, I want to honor our team here at Crosspoint Church Man, I've been so blessed to serve with some incredible people. And there's three men that have served closely by me in leadership. They're the leadership strength behind our church. One of them is Pastor Jeff, our family pastor. Jeff has served on our church nearly 12 years now. And he serves faithfully with our family ministry. And as he said, he's the most sensitive guy on our staff. You know what? I honor him for that. We need that. We need heart and passion. I I honor Eddie as well. Eddie is our our worship pastor who's done an incredible job each and every week. And Eddie, I honor you for leading us to King Jesus every single week. I honor you that it's not about you, that it's about him. There are a lot of people that can sing. There are a lot of talented people. But there are few that keep their eyes pointed to him that aren't trying to make themselves famous but are making Jesus famous. And for that, Eddie, I honor you. 
I honor Matt. Matt came on our team three years ago. And can I just tell you, our church went to a whole nother level after Matt came on our team. He built community into our church. Matt is one of the most brilliant strategic thinkers I have ever been around. I'll go in Matt's office and say, okay, how are we going to get from here to here? And he's going to say, it's like this, 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 this. I honor Matt for his heritage. Do you know he comes from seven generations of pastors? He's the seventh generation. His great, 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 great grandpa started it all as a pastor. I honor him for his heart for our church and his strategic leadership in our church. And we have over 15 staff members now. It blows my mind away. I think about the team members that we have that serve faithfully in children's ministry and our preschool ministry and, and celebrate recovery and student ministry and junior high and high school and so much support ministry going on as well. I honor you. And today, church, I honor you. I love you. Can I tell you that there is no other church in America that I'd rather serve in than this church right here. I believe in you. I love your passion. I love that this church, you guys get it when it comes to loving other people. You're, you're incredibly friendly from the street to the seat, but you don't just show love by just saying hi. You go out of your way to be able to serve other people. This is the most unselfish church I've ever seen. And can I say this? The reason why our church has reached so many people that were hurting, find hope, is because of your unselfishness. I've watched you time and time and time again around the world as well as across the street. And the light that shines the furthest should shine the brightest at home. And it does. And church, I honor you for shining bright, for using your time your talent, and your treasure, not for yourself, but for the kingdom of God. Cross Point Church, God is pleased with you, and I honor you. And God's taken us on an incredible journey over these last few years. Our church has grown from 70 to nearly 1,000 on the weekends. And four years ago, we started praying as a church and just said, God, what's next? Where do you want to take us? And he started blowing a fresh wind through our church and, and people's lives started being changed. And then we went from one service to two services to three services to four services. We started praying, God, what's next? And God put us in the waiting room. You ever feel like God put you in a waiting room? I don't like waiting rooms. I want it now. But God took us on a journey and said, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then just a few short months ago, God opened up the door and said, okay, church, you're ready to go to the next chapter now. You're ready. And he opened up a brand new building and facility for us that's 2.7 miles away from here, 1300 North Kellogg. And I'm pleased to announce, church, that tomorrow, we've agreed upon all the terms, tomorrow we will officially sign the lease tomorrow. This new building is nearly 50,000 square feet. It's going to be a thousand seat worship center. We're going to have state of the art kids ministry facility. We're going to have one of the greatest kids ministry facilities in all Southern California. We're putting space and we're putting time in for our students, our celebrate recovery, our marriage programs. We are putting some incredible focus on what God is going to do. Why? Because we believe God isn't finished with us yet. We believe that we're just getting started. We are confident that through God, all things are possible and our best days are ahead of us. And church, I am so excited about this new chapter that we're about to enter into. And for some of you, I want to invite you, now is the time to join us. Now is the time to engage, to be a part. And I honor you for your faithfulness, church, to get us where we're at. Today, I want to honor my best friend, the mother of my two children, I want to publicly honor my wife, Shannon. Shannon, I am forever indebted to your faithfulness and your prayers and your support and your encouragement. Church, I can't tell you how many times I've, well, I, I can stand up here very confident. Then I go home and I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work, Shannon. 
I don't know if anybody's going to show up at Easter this year. I hope people show up. And Shannon, she stands behind me and she believes in me and she says, they're going to be there. People are going to turn out. Shannon, I honor you for all of your private sacrifices that you've made that no one but us will know about. To all the private pain that you've endured as we've gone on this journey of leading this church through the last 10 years of change and resistance and some people leaving and many new people coming. And Chan, I love the fact that you love Jesus more now than you ever have. I see it in you. And I love the fact that you love me and that you love our children and that you love the people of Cross Point Church. I honor your friendship, your godliness, and your partnership. Today, church, we're going to display some honor today. To those who gave birth this year to your first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and you wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those that have experienced loss through miscarriage, through failed adoptions, or through runaways, we mourn with you today. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't make, mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms and mentor moms and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you today. To those who have disappointment and heartache and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those that have experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived with driving tests and medical tests and the overall testing of motherhood, we're better for having you in our midst. To those that are single and long to be married and mothering your own child, we mourn that life hasn't turned out the way that you long for it to be. To those who are step-parents, we walk with you as you navigate those difficult waters. And to those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you today. To all of those who are empty nesters in the upcoming year, we grieve with you and we rejoice with you. <laughs> to those who placed children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness. And we remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. When you walked in today, every person that came in a room received a carnation. If you don't have one, we have some in the back as well. And in just a moment, we're going to show some honor by giving the carnations. So here's what I want to instruct you to do today. I want to instruct you to take your carnations, and if your mother is here... I would encourage you to go to your mom and give her the carnation and simply tell her, I love you. And then add these words, and I honor you. I don't treat you as common. You are valuable. I honor you. Husbands, if you want some brownie points, this would be a good time to do it as well. 
You can take that carnation. You can be able to give it to your wife and tell her how much you love her and that you honor her. I've heard it said, it's better to give the flowers to someone while they are alive. While they can still smell them, today's your opportunity. For some of you, today is a very difficult day because your mother isn't in the room right now. And maybe you long for your mother to be in the room, but she's not here. And today, I want to encourage you to honor her. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your carnation today. And maybe she's not here because of distance, like my mother. Or maybe she's not here because of death. She's passed on. Or possibly she's not here because of some disappointments. I would encourage you to take your carnation in just a moment. We're going to give you an opportunity to come forward and lay the carnation on a rocking chair as a symbol of honor and love for your mother. Maybe some of you moms are here today and you've lost a child. You've lost a child and today is a day that you want to show honor to your child. Possibly you've had a miscarriage, maybe more than one. Today you'd like to take a carnation and you'd like to put it on the rocking chair as a symbol of your honor today. Father, we come before you right now. And God, we give you honor and respect because of who you are, what you've done. God, I think about your word that says, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. God, I pray that you will comfort people even in this moment as we symbolize our love and our honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.